Quite often, we read a claim that a certain population is distributed in a certain way. Maybe we say that 20% fall in one category, 40% fall in another category, and 30% fall in another category. The question we're going to take a look at today is how good that fit actually is to data we might collect. So the official question here, how do we test if data fits a claimed distribution. And as we do this hypothesis test, we have to run into a new distribution that tests how well data fits a claimed distribution. And the new distribution is what we call the chi squared distribution. And we use the Greek letter chi with a little squared on it. Looks like an x with tails on the ends. And this chi-squared distribution, a few characteristics of it, it is a non-symmetrical distribution. And it is skewed right. So unlike the normal and the t distribution, which is perfectly symmetrical, the chi-squared is skewed right. In fact, the shape itself varies based on the degrees of freedom. There is a different shape based on the degrees of freedom. And another unique thing about the chi-squared is that it is always greater than 0. With the t distribution and the normal distribution, we found it symmetrical around 0. We had positive values and negative values, representing if we were left or right of the mean. The chi-squared doesn't do that. The chi-squared actually starts at 0. And depending on the degrees of freedom, if there's only one degree of freedom, one degree of freedom, the graph looks something like this. But if we increase the degrees of freedom to maybe 3, it's going to look something like this with a little hump skewed to the right. And the more we increase the degrees of freedom, that hump is going to move slightly over. So this red line might represent 10 degrees of freedom. And so you see the shape varies quite dramatically based on the number of degrees of freedom we have. So let's look at how we can use the chi-squared distribution to test a claimed distribution. What we're going to do is the goodness of fit test. Or we've got some claim that a certain percent fall in various categories. Is that claim accurate? Does, it, does the data fit that distribution well? Is it a good distribution? The test statistic we will use is chi-squared is equal to the sum of the observed frequency minus the expected frequency squared divided by the expected frequency. So we've got some new variables. O is the observed frequency. And E is the expected frequency. And this chi-squared value we're going to calculate by hand. It's not too bad, but it is one we should know how to do. Now, with chi-squared, we have to know the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom with the goodness of fit is 1 less than the number of categories.
And then for our null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, with the goodness of fit test, we usually state it in a sentence rather than symbolically, like we did with the means in the t distribution or the normal distribution. So in words, the null hypothesis is that the data fits the distribution. The alternate hypothesis is that it's not equal to the distribution or that the data does not fit the distribution. And what's interesting about the chi-squared, because it starts at 0 and is skewed right, that alternate hypothesis is always going to be a right-tailed test. In fact, with chi-squared, almost always we're working with a right-tailed test. There's only one context, which we'll talk about in another video, where we could have a two-tailed test or a left-tailed test. But in general, chi-squared is a right-tailed test. Now, we can use our calculator to help us find the area that's in that right tail. So let's take a look at how the calculator can do that. What we'll do on the calculator is we will find the area from the test statistic. all the way out to infinity. How much area is in that right tail? The problem is our calculators can't do infinity. So we're going to put a number in that's pretty darn close to infinity. We're going to use 10 to the 99th power to represent infinity, because there's going to be very little area that's past 10 to the 99th power. That's a 1 with 99 zeros after it, a 100-digit number. That's pretty darn close to infinity. So the calculator keystrokes we want to do is first you'll hit the second button. Then you'll select the distribution function, which is really the vars button. And then above it, with the second feature, you're getting distribution. Then you can scroll down to the chi-squared CDF. Once you've selected the chi-squared CDF, what you'll do is you'll enter the test statistic, to represent the minimum value we're finding the area of. Then you'll do a comma. Then you will do the infinity, which is 10 raised to the 99th power. Then you will do a comma, and then you'll type in the degrees of freedom. We'll see this process work out when we do our example now. Let's say a researcher wants to verify a claim about her community. She wants to verify the claim about her community that 40% of the residents speak Spanish in the home. Ten percent speak Russian. Ten 
45% speak English. And 5% speak other languages. So the researcher does a survey. In a survey of 200 community members, Seventy one speak Spanish. Twenty three speak Russian. One hundred two speak English. And four. speak another language. If alpha equals 0.05, can the researcher conclude the claimed distribution? is accurate. We're going to go through the same process of a hypothesis test that we've gone through before. We've just got a different test statistic, but everything's exactly the same from there. Our null hypothesis, we said, is that the language, put it in context, but that the claim is accurate, that the language spoken in the home matches the distribution of the claim. The alternative hypothesis is that it does not match the claim, that the language spoken in the home does not match the claim or the distribution of the claim. I should say distribution because that's important. And we said with the chi-squared, we are almost always dealing with a right-tailed test. We end up more in the right tail the more different we are from the distribution. The distribution itself is a chi-squared distribution. And we'll do a little subscript for the number of degrees of freedom. We've got Spanish, Russian, English, and other four languages. The degrees of freedom is always one less than the number of categories. So we have three degrees of freedom. And now we're ready to calculate the test statistic. And this is where we're going to do our real work. We've got Spanish. Russian, English, and other. The claimed proportion, can't get it all on one page here, but uh, we've got 40% with Spanish, 10% with Russian. So Spanish is 0.4, Russian's 0.1, English 45%, 0.45. 
others 5%, 0.05. The expected value we've done a survey of 200 community members. So of those 200, we should expect 40% to speak Spanish. So we can calculate 40% or 0.4 times 200. And that gives us, we would expect 80 people in our survey to speak Spanish. For the Russian, we'd expect it to be 10%. 10% of the 200, 10, 0.10 times 200 is 20. For the English, 0.45 times 200 is 90. And for the other, 0 0.05 times 200 is 10. So we use those percentages and the total sample size to calculate what we expect to happen. But something different happened in our observed probabilities. What we observed is 71 spoke Spanish. This is from our survey. We observed 23 Russians. We observed 102 English. And we observed four other languages. So now what we can do is we can use that chi-squared statistic is the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. Similar to how we did the standard deviation by hand back in chapter 1, we're going to just make a different column so that we can sum those observed minus expected squareds over expected. So first, observed minus expected. Observed minus expected. The observed comes first. So 71 minus 80 is negative 9. 23 minus 20 is negative 3. 102 minus 90 is 12. Oops, I'm sorry. 23 minus 20 is a positive 3. And 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Then we square those values, the observed minus expected squared. 9 squared is 81, 3 squared is 9, 12 squared is 144, and negative 6 squared is 36. Now we take the observed minus the expected squared, and we divide by the expected value. The expected value column is that second column here. So 81 divided by 80 is 1.0125. 9 divided by 20 is 0.45. 144 divided by 90 is 1.6. And 36 divided by 10 is 3.6. Now we're ready to actually find that sum of the observed minus expected squared divided by the expected by adding up that last column, 1.0125 plus 0.45 plus 1.6 plus 3.6 gives us 6.6625. That is our chi-squared test statistic. Now that we have our test statistic, we are ready to calculate a p-value. And we're going to do that p-value by doing the chi-squared CDF. We're going to go from a low value of 6.6625 to a high value of infinity, which we use 10 to the 99th power for infinity. And we said we had 3 degrees of freedom. So on our calculator, to get the chi-squared distribution, we're going to hit second, and then the vars button, which gives us distribution. And we'll scroll down. We want the chi-squared CDF. It has to be the CDF. Make sure you don't do the PDF. We're never going to use that one. The CDF, 
The lower limit is 6.6625. The upper limit is infinity, which we'll use 10 to the 99th power. And the degrees of freedom is 3. And when I hit paste, you see it types those numbers in for me. If you don't have the newest model of the TI-84, you might just have to enter in these numbers with commas separating them. Get the same thing, though. We end up with 0 0.0835. 0 0.0835. And what that p-value tells us is the probability that null hypothesis is true given our data. Based on the survey, there is an 8.35% chance the proportion of people who speak various languages matches the claimed distribution. Eight percent chance that it matches the claim distribution. But we said that alpha is 0.05. In other words, we will believe the claim distribution all the way down to 5%. We only have an 8%, or we still have an 8%. So we're still going to believe that null hypothesis. Our decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the reason for that decision is because our p-value is bigger than alpha. There's enough evidence to still believe the null hypothesis. Specifically, the p-value was 0.0835, which is bigger than alpha, which was 0.05. So we can make a conclusion in context, focusing on the alternative hypothesis. We say that there is not sufficient evidence to conclude the distribution of languages spoken in the home is different than the claimed distribution. Not enough evidence to say it's different, so we'll have to be uh, stuck believing that distribution is true. That's the goodness of fit tests. The hypothesis test process is still exactly identical. We just have a new distribution of chi-squared. We have to do a little bit of arithmetic to calculate that chi-squared value, but it's not too bad. So go ahead and take a look at a few if you want to practice some. We'll talk about it more in class. We will see you then.